Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, it's Dani. In today's video, as I promised, I'm gonna show you how to join the hexagons that we learned how to crochet in the previous video. So if you haven't watched that video, um, I'm gonna leave it right here on your top right corner so you can check the video on how to make the hexagons and now I'm gonna show you how to join them to create pretty much anything that you would like. In this case, I used mine to create this beautiful table runner, which I'm obsessed with. And personally, this is the easiest and the nicest way to join either hexagons or granny squares that I have found. But like I said, this is just my personal opinion. It's not bulky, super easy, and you can see it's very beautiful, the final result. So if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Leave your comments below. You guys know everything, every kind of interaction with this video, it's super helpful. So now let's see what you need to join your hexagons. Okay, so first of all, you would need your hexagons. So for my table runner, I did 29. But this is going to depend on the length, right? So I made for a small coffee table, but you can make as long as you would like. And this is the good thing about it is that we can join them, start joining them, and then you can add more if you need to. So for mine, like I said, I used 29. And I'm also going to leave you the link to my blog in the description box below there you're gonna find the exact diagram that i use it's gonna be super super helpful for you i'm also gonna leave the link for all the colors and how i placed each color like each row based on the colors so check the blog it's gonna be super helpful and then continue watching this video okay so in here you can see that i started with two hexagons then three, then two, then three, etc. And then at the end, I decided to put one single one um, on each end. So I'm gonna add that at the very end. So in here, I need to do the next row, which is gonna be two, hex two hexagons. As you can see, there's a space in between in here. It's because I started joining them this way which is easier for me. And then at the end, I did these little parts, these little sides. Um, you can do it however you want, however it's easier for you, but I found that this was the easiest for me. So now I have to grab two hexagons. Okay, so I have this minty color and then this kind of like mustard color as well. And as I mentioned, I'm going to start from the right, going up, joining these two together. Then down, joining these two together. Then joining these two together, going up. And then joining these two together, going down. So it might seem confusing, but it's easier for you whenever you have the diagram in hand, so check that out. And I'm also gonna be using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook, which is a size smaller than the one I used to make the hexagons. And of course I'm using the yarn that it's the same color as the last row that I did. This is because you are gonna be able to see the yarn so pick the color that you would like. In this case, like I said, I'm using the same color as the last row. Okay, so in here I have both hexagons facing the wrong side. And I'm gonna grab just one strand of the stitch from the top hexagon and one from the bottom hexagon. Then grab your yarn and you're going to slip stitch through both loops. Okay. Now, you want to keep your yarn, not the little tail, <laughs> the one that's coming from the ball. You want to keep your um, working yarn at the very bottom. Okay, so 
under both hexagons. In here, I'm going to grab that loop, the yarn it's behind, I'm going to go to the next loop, and then yarn over and slip stitch. We're going to do it again. Go to the top hexagon with the yarn in the back in here. Grab one loop only, the one that's closer to you. Then go to the other hexagon and grab the other loop, yarn over, pull through the three stitches or the three loops. The three loops, not the three stitches. <laughs> And now that you get the hand of it, it's going to start going really fast. But take your time and make sure you're grabbing the right um, stitch because you have the same amount of stitches on both hexagons. So you want to keep them straight and to do that you need um, to grab the right stitch on both sides. And in here, like I said, it's very important that the yarn, the working yarn, it's behind both hexagons. So it's easier for you to pull through. So I'm going to continue until I'm done joining these two colors together or these two hexagons. Okay, so now that I have joined these two sides, I'm going to bring the other one right here. And we're going to join these two together down here. So you're going to continue with the same yarn. You don't need to cut anything. And in here, I'm in one corner, so make sure you're going to the other corner. So that you have the same amount of stitches on both sides. And now we're going to continue doing this all the way down as well. Okay, so in here I'm about to finish. And now we need to bring the new hexagon, which is this one right here. So we can join this part and then the other one. So now we join this side with the other one. And basically that is how we are attaching both um, hexagons together. It's just slip stitch. And after you attach the first two, it's going to be way easier. You're going to get the hand of it and it's going to go super fast, I promise. And you also don't have to follow the same, um, no rule, but the way that I am joining them, you can join... I don't know like all sides of one hexagon right away and then the next one etc this is just a way that I find easier for myself and I like to share it with you so you can also see if it's easier for you what in here I already finished this row and I did the zigzag and now I'm going to cut the yarn and you can either weave in the end right away or leave it to the last minute. And now bring the new three hexagons, place them where they are supposed to go. And like I said, if you need a little bit of help, use some safety pins. And so you know exactly where you have to join, where you have to go with your yarn basically. So start from the right and going down, then the next two going up, then the next two down, and the next two up. And cut the yarn and then continue doing the same thing. And at the end you can join the little spaces in between that you have left. And that's basically how you join them. I'm going to show you in here one more time 
how to start. So I go from the corner of the top one, and then the corner of the bottom one, grab your new yarn, and slip stitch through both loops. Make sure your yarn is under both hexagons. Grab your working yarn and start the same process again. So I hope this was easy for you to understand, that it was clear. If you have any questions, please leave them um, down below. Remember that you're gonna have the link to my blog in the description box. Um, that way you can get the diagram of exactly where I placed what color, every color that I used, and it's gonna be super helpful, so definitely go check that out. And if you don't know how to make the hexagon, check the previous video, because I showed you um, step by step how to make the hexagons. It's really, really easy. You only need to crochet three rows, and that's it. Oh, uh, three rounds, sorry. <laughs> and yeah, this is the way I join hexagons or, or granny squares. And like I said, to me, this is the easiest and also the one that looks the best. It's not bulky or anything. So if you don't like this method, don't worry, don't stress. There are so many other different ways that you can join um, hexagons or, or granny squares. So you can find other videos if you would like. Um, so that's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed if so, please give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, follow me on social media, and please share this video with all your friends. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!